Hey, welcome back. Uh, last segment, we were discussing uh, the great civil war in Lebanon and the ending of that war. And in this segment, I want to begin with the discussion of a very important period, a 15-year period from 1990 until uh, 2005. As I mentioned, this, this is an important period in the brief history of Lebanon because it really coincides with two important events. One, domestically for Lebanon, of course, that being the end of the great civil war. Uh, and then the second lead also coincides, the ending of that war coincides with also the ending of the Cold War. And that is very important because if you recall, I mentioned Middle East and also Lebanon in particular have been a Cold War impacted regions. In fact, if you recall, uh, both civil wars in Lebanon uh, had an important external factor. Both of those factors were related to the Cold War. So therefore, the period 1900 to 2005 uh, is a new period, in a sense, uh, for Lebanon because of those two events. So uh, during that period, uh, the first important event occurs in 1992, when uh, Rafiq Hariri becomes the Prime Minister of Lebanon. Uh, uh, Rafiq Hariri is a businessman uh, and a businessman who really turned politician. What he really wanted to do was to turn Lebanon uh, into a business hub of the Arab world. In other words, to capitalize on Lebanon's financial potential. And his economic policies uh, in order to accomplish that very much followed the so-called neoliberal doctrine, which most of you understand. It's basically a very strong private sector role minimizing government uh, subsidies and government uh, social welfare uh, by pushing the private sector, hoping that there'll be a kind of a trickle-down economic impact. Now, meanwhile, uh, one of the key features of Lebanese politics in the post-Civil War period was, as you can uh, pretty much anticipate, was the rise of Shiites as a very, very powerful political force in the region. Specifically, uh, one of them is, of course, Hezbollah. And Hezbollah really got uh, to establish its reputation after the Israeli invasion in 1982. It uh, gained a reputation as a tenacious uh, organization and an efficient one willing to fight Israel. Uh, and remember, Hezbollah is not just good fighters, they also have an extensive, extensive uh, social services system in which after the war they attend to the need, needs of the people, the buildings and the homes that have been destroyed by Israeli bombardment, they mobilize to build it. So it's not just a fighting machine, it's also a very efficient uh, social organization. So Hezbollah is one of those uh, political forces that is emerging in Lebanon. The other is Amal. Amal uh, is not as militant as Hezbollah, but it's also a Shiite movement. Uh, you may recall I mentioned back in the 70s, 1970s, the Shah of Iran tried to play with it. Both Hezbollah and Amal uh, are parties and they have done well in Lebanese uh, election. Hezbollah's popularity, in fact, in much of the Arab and Muslim world uh, it seems to grow each time it's able to take on uh, the Israelis. And remember, Hezbollah is a non-state actor that has taken on a regional superpower, Israel, when none of the Arab states have been able to do so. So in that sense, uh, Hezbollah's uh, sense of accomplishment is very much appreciated, and it reflects the weakness of the Arab states militarily 
vis-a-vis -vis Israel. Now, <clears throat> in 1993, Israelis uh, are in constant fight, remember, in, with, with, uh, with Hezbollah. In 1993, Israelis attacked Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, and the operation was called uh, Operation Accountability. Uh, in that fight, Hezbollah fought back uh, and, and uh, more than stood its ground. So you know that Israel has to do whatever it can to delegitimize or to change Hezbollah's reputation. So again, in 1996, we get uh, Israeli is attacking Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. And once again, uh, this operation uh, becomes a point of contestation uh, for, uh, between Israel and Hezbollah. The operation was dubbed uh, Grapes of Wrath, and it began in April of uh, nine, April 11, 1996, and the war actually continued for about 16 days. Then uh, something very important happened in April 18, uh, 1996. Israel ended up. Uh, shelling uh, the United Nations compound in the village of Ghana in southern Lebanon. Uh, the episode became known as uh, the Ghana Massacre. Basically, what happened was that close to 106 civilians were killed. They had sought refuge in the UN compound because Israel was bombing their village. And another 116 uh, uh, people were uh, injured. Uh, the victims, as I mentioned, had sought the safety of the United Nations compound against the Israelis' uh, uh, pretty much indiscriminate bombardment of their village. Now, here is a pretty good example of how an episode can have such a ripple effect. And that's why the Ghana massacre and the operation of Grape of Wrath is important. Lest we forget that such killings, far from being benign events, uh, could have very profound and unforeseen consequences, it is worth noting that in the aftermath of the operation Grape of Wrath and the Ghana massacre, which was part of that operation, you have one uh, person by the name of Mohammed Atta. Later on, you know that he was the leader of the terrorist group that pulled off the 9-11 attack against the United States. You have Mohammed Atta pledging martyrdom to avenge the deaths and destruction caused by Israel after the Operation Grape of Wrath and Ghana Massacre. So Mohammed Atta is uh, pledging his uh, martyrdom and uh, the rest you know. Uh, he is going to carry that out. So events like that are going to have repercussions. And most uh, Americans uh, are unaware of how events there can at the end come and haunt us back here. The year 2000 is also a very important watershed uh, for Lebanon. Uh, that year, uh, Hezbollah's popularity uh, soars uh, to an extent that had never been experienced because it ends up really achieving, in a sense, the year 2000 is a culmination of the achievements of Hezbollah against Israel uh, because what happened uh, there was that after years of fighting there Hezbollah had forced Israel to finally give up on uh, the security zone it had created in the southern Lebanon. Uh, you may recall that that security zone uh, was 
uh, under Israeli control for about 22 years. And it, it was Hezbollah's constant raids against Israel's occupation of Lebanon uh, that uh, made Israel bleed. At one point, Prime Minister Barak decided that it's simply not worth keeping. And so, uh, thanks to Hezbollah, uh, Israel decides to unilaterally withdraw from almost all of that area. Therefore, the year 2000, that accomplishment, again, uh, greatly enhanced Hezbollah's reputation. And in many ways, when you think about it, it marks the only time any Arab group had succeeded to end Israeli's occupation by force, uh, a feat uh, that was accomplished really by a non-state actor, uh, which no Arab state, per se, were able to accomplish. In the meantime, the only, by the end of the century, by the end of uh, the, the 20th century, Syria's military presence and role in Lebanon politics is becoming increasingly challenged, especially by the Sunnis and the Christians. Uh, Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri, uh, you also may recall, uh, had pushed Lebanon much closer to the conservative Saudis and other uh, Persian Gulf monarchies. And this was done in part because Hariri looked to the oil-rich Arab uh, states in the Persian Gulf uh, to bring uh, potential petrodollars to rebuild Lebanon as a financial center of the Middle East. But also, uh, one should mention, in good measure, uh, the strategy that Hariri was following was designed really to diminish and ultimately uh, bring to a rapid end uh, Syria's domineering presence in Lebanon. So Hariri's re-election uh, to become Lebanon's prime minister in 2000 made him even more resolved than before uh, to pursue the strategic realignment of Lebanon away from Syria uh, toward uh, the, the Arab uh, uh, monarchies in the Persian Gulf. And this, of course, dismayed Syria uh, very much. Uh, now, on the opposing side, <clears throat> well, you had, let, let me go back. On the side that supported uh, Hariri, you had the Sunni Muslims, which I mentioned, and especially the anti-Syrian Maronite Christians they were all supporting uh, the realignment of uh, Lebanon's uh, strategic alliance with the, uh, with the Saudis and uh, the, the Gulf monarchies. On the opposing side, uh, you had the Hezbollah and a few pro-Syrian Maronites that were headed by uh, former General Lahoud, who happens to be a Maronite Christian. So he had a tiny... Uh, or much smaller group of pro-Syrian Maronites, Lahoud, aligning themselves with Hezbollah f in support of Syria versus a large Sunni Muslim and, of course, the, uh, the Christian Maronite against that. So under Lebanon, uh, un under Hariri, Lebanon's relation with Syria continued to really deteriorate uh, further while domestically itself, Lebanon's politics is becoming increasingly polarized. And the polarizing issue really has to do with Syria and Syria's role uh, in that conflict.